Hello everyone, Andy Wolverton here to talk about a film noir box set that was out of print and will be back in print on June 28th, 2022. I'm talking about the reissue of Film Noir, The Dark Side of Cinema from Kino Lorber. This is great news since many people missed out on the initial release from 2016. It looks like this is the same exact set as the first release, so let's take a look at what you're getting. I'm going with the titles in the original order of release, starting with He Ran All the Way from 1951, directed by John Barry. This was John Garfield's last film before his death at age 39 and is one of the first family held hostage or home invasion pictures, one that's been imitated many times, yet hard to beat. Garfield plays Nick Roby, a low-life thief who blows a robbery by killing a cop and abandoning his partner, played by the wonderful Norman Lloyd. Roby does manage to hang on to $10,000, but doesn't know how long he can outrun the cops. He desperately needs a hideout and finds a girl named Peg, played by Shelley Winters, who seems interested in him. Roby decides she'll be his ticket to safety, whether she wants to or not. He Ran All the Way features some superb work, most notably Garfield's portrayal of a paranoid criminal and James Wong Howe's amazing cinematography. But many have overlooked Shelley Winter's exceptional work here, mainly due to the attention focused on Garfield's final performance. Although we're now used to home invasion movies, I challenge you to find a performance in one that's as good as Winter's, one that reflects the fear, love, excitement, and bravery of her character. The film's final scene is also one of the most powerful in noir. Next up, Witness to Murder from 1954, directed by Roy Rowland. Witness to Murder gets unfairly compared to a similar film that came out the same year, Alfred Hitchcock's massively popular Rear Window. Many consider Witness to Murder a ripoff of Rear Window, but Witness to Murder was released nearly four months before the Hitchcock film opened. Rear Window clearly is the better film, but Witness to Murder stands as a mostly solid noir thriller largely due to the cinematography of the great John Alton. Barbara Stanwyck is great, no surprise there, as Cheryl Draper, a woman who witnessed, or thinks she witnessed, the man next door murdering his wife. George Sanders, as the suspected man, is also quite good. The romance between Cheryl and a police lieutenant, played by Gary Merrill, isn't so great but the film is still worth a look. Let's move on to Big House USA from 1955, directed by Howard W. Koch. Man, what a great cast. Broderick Crawford, Ralph Meeker, Reed Hadley, William Tallman, Lon Chaney Jr., and Charles Bronson. Wow. The biggest surprise here is that everyone gets good representation and fairly equal screen time. And for the most part, each actor runs with it. Meeker plays Jerry Iceman Barker, a lifetime criminal who kidnaps a 10-year-old boy who's just run away from summer camp. The boy suffers from asthma, and you can tell right away something awful is going to happen to him. Barker is caught and sent to prison, but he says nothing about the ransom money he collected from the boy's father. Now, inside the slammer, Barker meets the other inmates, played by Tallman, Chaney, and Bronson, all of whom hate him for having involved a kid in his crimes. Yet Rollo Lamar, played by Crawford, the worldly yet philosophical leader of the group, is planning an escape and sees an opportunity to include Barker, hoping to score some of the new guy's hidden loot. It takes a while for us to reach the big house itself, but you never really feel cheated because of it. More people should see this film, especially for the terrific performances by all these tough guys. Next up, 
A Bullet for Joey from 1955, directed by Lewis Allen. A communist agent, played by Peter Van Eck, hires an exiled American gangster named Joe Victor, played by George Raft, to travel to Montreal to kidnap an atomic physicist. Victor calls on his old flame Joyce, played by Audrey Totter, to get the scoop on the physicist's routines and habits. Meanwhile, Canadian police inspector Raoul Leduc, played by Edward G. Robinson, investigates a series of seemingly unrelated crimes that point to something big. Despite a good cast, a bullet for Joey never really rises above its pedestrian script. Even Edward G. Robinson, always fantastic, even in bad pictures, seems bored to tears in nearly every scene. If Robinson and Audrey Totter can't save your film, there's something very much wrong with it. And what's wrong with it is a dull script with one-dimensional writing and characters. I've never really cared much for George Raft, but at least he provides a little tension here. Well, for a while. For me, A Bullet for Joey is easily the weakest film in this set, but you should see it at least once just for the cast. Finally, we have Storm Fear from 1956, starring and directed by Cornell Wilde. Here's another variation on the home invasion story. After being wounded while pulling off a bank robbery, Charlie Blake, played by Wilde, decides to hide out with his weak-kneed brother Fred, played by Dan Duryea, and his family, consisting of Fred's wife, played by Jean Wallace, and his young son, played by David Stollery. Fred's New England farm home would make for a nice hideout, if not for the approaching snowstorm. Some nice noir elements, but things get fairly ridiculous and out of control, the way soap operas usually do. We're certainly not used to seeing Duryea playing the weakling in noir, but Stephen Hill, as the psychotic criminal Bernie, provides some genuine interest. Good performances make this an interesting snowbound noir. So the big winners here, he ran all the way, and Big House USA easily make this set a must-own. The only supplements on any of these discs consist of trailers. Bottom line, Kino Lober's first volume of film noir, The Dark Side of Cinema, is a set worth owning for any film noir fan. If you're a completist for these Dark Side of Cinema sets, you'll want to get this. And remember, that's coming out on June the 28th. As always, thanks for watching. I'll have more next time.